All right, I'm making a video. Uh, I'm posting to YouTube because Facebook has made it to where you can't. You got to make a video through their their little app, and and they give you like basically 30 seconds to make a video. And I'm too long-winded for all that. I've got too much to say all the time. Um, and anyways, I just wanted to thank Hume Beam for his efforts in creating the Hercules mod because I am. Just now, finally getting around to finally getting it printed in polycarbonate, and this is like my third print off the machine, and I am just so impressed with these lines. I mean, this is a significant improvement over what what it looked like before. Um, I mean, just yeah, there's some zigzag lines. I know they're kind of crisscrossing here and there. I I see it as well as you guys do, most likely, but that's just from drippings from when it's you know the the print heads crossing back over printed parts and this nasty and a little bit of plastic drops down here and there and it causes some imperfections but the lines that are laid down are uniform and nicely laid down and they're they just look good man this looks really good i'm really impressed this is my prototype x carriage x carriage for the uh um um for my any cubic Sharon that I crucified, I crucified it, and uh, crucified meaning that I converted it over to linear rods for the carriage system, as opposed to the uh, skate mini skateboard wheels that it was using before. Um, some people wonder, well, it's just going to go back and forth. It's all all it is. So why why bother switching over to, to linear rods or, or linear rails for that matter? Well, um, if you constrain it's the carriage's movement of each axis, if you constrain it enough. And keep it from ringing, aka vibrating, aka resonating too much, then you can improve your print quality um, uh, dramatically. Uh, so, um, so that's why people see tend to see uh, improvements in their printer's performance uh, after they've converted over their their printer from the the skateboard wheels, the little mini skateboard roller skate wheels, to uh, to uh, to a, a linear linear rod uh, system, yeah, I know this looks a little jacked up right here because I because uh, uh, when I made this prototype, there was a hole that popped open right here and that's not supposed to be there, and that actually should have kept, you know, should have been a solid thing, but that would have made it really thin right here. So instead of it printing a th that, that thin part right there, it just omitted that little section right there. Um, but it's easily fixable in the next prototype I come up with. Um, but uh, yeah, the lines that I do see laid down are are freaking awesome, man. I'm really, really impressed with this. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I just I can't thank you enough, Human Beam. You're, you, you've, you've done it, man. This really, these lines, man, they, I just can't get enough of these lines. Um, they are very nice. Um, yeah, man. So anyways, this, uh, this little X carriage system right here is based off of the AI3M mk4 x carriage system um i kind of copied some of their stuff as you can see right here but this right here i made on my own you know this these little holes right here is mine that's mine i made that um and my carriage plate system is slightly different um so here's the here's i guess you can call this the the uh the back this is the back side this is where everything compresses down and compresses those bearings and, and locks them onto the thing this one's wider also um uh, the next prototype I come up with is going to have holes, a dedicated hole down the center for wire, for cable management. So there's going to be a space between here and here. So there's going to be a little space about right there between the bearings. Uh, and I'm going to put a hole through there where there's a gap in the bearing so that way uh, 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 someone can focus on cable management purposes. Um, but uh, anyways, yeah. Um, and... The way I've got it set up is I've got a quick release plate system set up. So, so you've got this. This is the plate. It's going to go and sit inside here like this, and it's going to lock into place. Uh, somehow this ended up taller, way taller. Somehow I don't know how I did that, but um, it's basically going to dip down and lock down into that little place. And I want it to fucking lock in there really good and be snug, like a snap kind of lock. And then once it's snapped and locked into place, then you would just get one single bolt and tighten it down. As you can see, I've got some, got some 
got some work to do to get that thing lower. I gotta sand this down significantly or melt it down a little bit to get this thing to to meet that eye to eye right there. And then so it doesn't have this lip, this big lip here on the top, of which I do want the lip. I want a little bit of a lip, but I want a dedicated lip piece that like sticks up and you can just so you so you can grab it and pull it out. So you pull it out. So if you want to, and, and also also I'm gonna have a double extrusion system connected to this. And it's going to be a basically uh, an in, in, in-house BMG uh, clone, but it's going to be 3D printed, but it uses the parts from the in, inner, inner parts of the uh, BMG, uh, BMG extruder, and they're going to be right here and here, side by side, and you got two, two nozzles hanging down, and then stepper motor on this side, stepper motor on this side, and so that way it's as close it's as close to the rods so that way the stepper motors and all the weight of the of the the direct drive systems are as close to the rods as possible to keep the center of gravity more towards the rods so that way it help helps to uh, minimize ringing and resonances because the further out the further out your your uh your system is like so say like you got a direct drive attached to this and then it's attached to that attached to this plate, which is great and all. But then you're you got your extruder right here, and you got your stepper motor right here, and then you got a fan out here. So you got you got this big gap right here where it's hanging out from the rods. And yeah, yeah, this can hold it up. It can definitely hold hold that up, you know, and hold that weight. But but what you don't realize it, but this is actually bobbing. It's bobbing ever so slightly. So the further away you get from this, the more you you change up the center of gravity and the more it uh it it will bob and and bounce up and down and it will affect your print and guess what when that that little bit of bob and bob and weave it's gonna it's gonna freaking it's gonna translate in your prints it's gonna etch in your prints and you're gonna see it in your prints so i'm trying to keep that as close i'm trying to keep all that weight as close to the to the rods as possible so again i'm gonna have a uh, two two bmg cloned uh uh things right here they're 3d printed they're gonna be attached to this plate and then from there you got the outside here where's that thing at matter of fact yeah it'll be something like this there's the, there's your there's a, there's a clone right there so anyways there's gonna be two of these things side by side it's gonna be one right here and one that's mirrored exactly like this one but it's on the opposite side but it's like over here but it's basically mirrored into the other direction. So it's like a left hand right here and a right hand right here, both in an effort to have the, this little have this little this little tab right here, this little lever stick out, so that way you can access the the insides, the innards, to uh, clear a clog or, or what have you, or to make sure your gears are in line and, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, um, so so anyways, that, that, that those will go right here like that, and then the stepper motor will be right here. And then the stepper motor is going to bolt in right here. So your stepper motor is going to be right here. And it's going to be very, very close to the rod. So that's going to keep it from bouncing and, and resonating so much. Uh, so that's that's the hopes anyway. So um, uh, so anyways, yeah, I mean, I still can't get over these lines and how nice they look. Look at this. This is beautiful. The 3D printer printed this freaking thing like a beast, man. Um, it's just... It's just so clean. It's so clean. I mean, a lot of y'all are like, "Oh, you know, that's just you know, that's an X Max, you know." But now, this compared to my MK10 nozzles, these these Polisi 3D nozzles that I've been using um, are are hardened steel and they last a long time and they they actually are really good nozzles. You get like four of them for for uh, I want to say 14 or 15 or 16 bucks. Um, price kind of keeps going up on them because they know their quality um now honestly i think they're from the same manufacturer as the one who creates the official genuine e3d nozzles um because they look exactly the same um but anyways yeah yeah uh yeah and this thing's gonna have a fan duct system where's that fan duct at where is that fan duct yeah oh yeah it's gonna have a, a fan duct system um this this was ad adopted from the MK4 uh, uh, direct drive system, or I'm sorry, the, in, in, the X carriage system. So, anyways, this this fan deck will go underneath like that, and it'll bolt on right here. And then your nozzles are going to be sitting. Oh wait, this is backwards then. So your nozzles are going to be sitting right there, and they drop down, and this, the fan is going to catch that right here, 
and it's going to help keep the nozzles cool right there. And then on the back, it's going to have a 5015 right here. A 5015. So the 5015 will be hanging off the back, back side, and then it pushes the air to the front, and then boom. And you got the linear rods right there, of course, and then a uh, uh, cable management system goes right there in the middle, and uh, uh, BL Touch will be incorporated in all that, all that jazz and stuff. So it's going to look really good when it's, when it's finally completed, but I'm just getting one part printed at a time, one thing built at a time, so that way I can troubleshoot each one at a time and get it going. But anyways, it's turned into a long video, guys. I just wanted to uh, give thanks to Hume Beam for his awesome freaking... Hercules mod, man. It's freaking awesome, man. These these layer lines are just uh, phenomenal. Oh, yeah, real quick, real quick, guys. Uh, I do concentric patterned supports. And here's why. Because, look, they're all just one wall. One wall. It's not like a grid that's hard to remove from your from your build plate. I mean, from your, from your print. So this was sitting on here like this or whatever. And... Or something like that. Anyway, it's basically just like that. But... When I took it off, I got I got a little little putty knife thing, and it just just chiseled right down, straight down the middle, and it just chiseled all off in one piece. That's what I love about concentric patterned supports is they will come off all at once. Um, and not only that, but when you do support line distance uh, uh, in Kira's settings, the support line distance can be increased or decreased, which makes these walls closer or further apart. The further apart, the easier it is to remove. The less clutter you got on your print left over um, and it just makes for easier removal of the supports however the caveat can be with that is it can cause the print to dip down where it's not getting enough support so you got to find a balance between making these as far apart as possible versus close too close uh, for print quality and, and what have you um, but yeah I love concentric support patterns uh, and then, oh yeah then I take that another notch up by doing by increasing the support Z distance from point one to point two, which makes the so say like this is the support this is this, the supports like this is how I was touching the build plate was like this actually, and so I had a brim support so it, it adheres really well and then uh, support Z distance uh, is actually the distance between is the distance between the top of the supports and the bottom of the model. So the more you increase the support Z distance, the further apart the supports are from the model. Um, so it makes it even easier to remove the support. So, um, anyways, this is all I got, guys. This is like a 12 minute video. I gotta go. Y'all bless day. Thanks.